All right, guys, it is eight o'clock. Um, we'll go ahead and get started here with my guest, Bradley Sutton from uh, Helium 10. Did I pronounce your last name right, uh, yep. right Bradley? All right, yeah. Yep. Yep. I feel like there weren't too it's many funny, ways for uh, me. To- I used to live in Japan, and um, the Japanese pronunciation of Sutton is pretty much their word for Satan. Oh, so yeah, nice. It's, it's That's good, good that uh, in, uh, your accent <laughs> is perfect. Yeah, it was one of those words where it was. It was. Uh, I was sure enough that I was like, I'm just gonna go for it. I'm not gonna even ask him before the show how to how to pronounce his last name. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna lean into this. But yeah, guys, I'm excited. Uh, Bradley's gonna talk tonight about Helium 10. I know that a lot of you are um, have probably heard of Helium 10 if you if you have been around the Amazon space at all, whether you're researching uh, tools for your arbitrage business or just reading the blog posts. And from but from people like me, I I mentioned Helium 10 quite a bit on my blog. Um, it's a really really cool software and the one thing that uh that i think is uh is it's it's a catch-22 because it's one of their best features and it's also one of their uh one of the things that i think maybe keeps from some people from using it is that it has so much uh power like there's so many different things it does and i think a lot of people are like they kind of get like a paralysis by analysis sort of thing so i wanted to make sure that there's anybody that's on the fence that's been considering using helium 10 um that bradley helps uh, kind of take down some of that uh, paralysis by analysis by showing us which tools they can use and which ones are most popular inside of the suite. Uh, the people, the ones that people get going with, because uh, you don't need to use every single one of them, and there's different tiers, right? But um, when, you know, you're going to show us behind the behind the hood tonight and show uh, how to use everything. So, uh, Bradley, you uh, go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit better than I just did, and I will. Uh, I just want to make sure that we're getting the streaming into the group. Cool. Well. Uh- My name is Bradley, and I'm the director of training and of customer success here at Helium 10. Uh, Basically, I'm in charge of making all the training videos, training uh, our affiliates, and uh, training our users, training our staff here, uh, as well as customer success on the user side. Basically, it's a pretty easy concept, you know. Helium 10 is not going to be successful if our users aren't successful using it, you know, on Amazon. So uh, the more successful our users are on Amazon, better uh, we are. So that's what my job uh, mainly is. Before here, I've only worked here since July. Uh, I was a consultant for Amazon sellers. I never actually launched my own private label products. I I would do arbitrage and wholesale just on the side for some cash flow. But my main business was helping, you know, bigger brands launch on Amazon. And I uh, launched over 400 products myself um, for other companies. Again, not for myself. And I was using Helium 10. and, And that's how I got kind of connected with Manny and the gang and wasn't looking for a job. But but turned out this was my, my dream job here. So here I am, and um, I, I, I come from your background. You know, I'm not a marketer or somebody who's just trying to sign you up. Like, I, I've been in the trenches. I still do. You know, I don't, I don't currently, you know, sell on Amazon, but I have tons of friends who have accounts because uh, that, that they allow me access to because I love just being in the trenches and, and testing things. You know, I test launches. I test uh, data and stuff like that. So um, pretty much you guys can throw any question at me, and I'm – 95% sure I should be able to have an, an answer for it or, or something with Helium 10 or, or even just anything Amazon related. But i uh, just love to introduce you guys a little bit more to the, the software suite and then um, pretty much answer any questions that you guys might have. Perfect. All right, guys. And let me see if I can find the chat, chat room. Here we go. All right, guys. The chat is open if you guys have any questions. Um, if, if we don't have actual questions to answer as they come, um, Bradley, do you just want to kind of start going inside of Helium 10? Do you want to share your screen and we can kind of go yeah. through? Uh, I'm going to share my uh, screen here just a, as a disclaimer. I've had blue screen of death twice today uh, on this computer. I'm about to order the uh, Surface Studio. Finally got uh, that approved. But if nice. I get cut off or if I get uh, – I've been getting the oh snap in Chrome. Like I must have some kind of malware in here. But It's so it's so maddening when they hit you with uh, Oh, yep. snap. Too. I was doing a webinar this morning right in the middle. It cooked me a blue screen of death and had to, yeah, uh, had to lock back on. But I've got a backup computer here. But So, guys, if you get a black screen on me, just uh, Nate said he's going to do some singing and dancing for you guys to keep you Yeah, we'll do some entertained. whiteboard back here. Yeah, let's Play see. Play Hangman or something. All right. So, you should see my Amazon screen here. Yes, sir. Uh, the first thing that I want to show you guys is the different features of the Chrome extension. Now, overall, there's actually over 20 different tools that Helium 10 has. Uh, we have tools within tools. So right now, we're just going to go over the Chrome extension. So um, let me get this thing off here. Yeah, give me something to search for. By the way, 
we didn't rehearse any of this. Uh, he didn't tell me what he's going to ask me. I didn't say what I'm going to show. I have no idea. Uh, I love doing it this way. And then maybe, uh, has anybody chat, chatted yet? Um, I stopped looking. I'm looking in the group now to make sure that we're streaming. Yeah, I'm going to say, I know there's like a probably delay, but somebody tell me something to, you know, while, while you and I talk, while they catch up, somebody tell me something to search for on Amazon just to make sure. Because Nate, if, if you tell me something, then people will say, ah, oh, yeah, you guys probably prepared this, right? Right. That's a good point. Let me log into my other account and tell you in the chat. I see somebody's chatting on here on the, on the Zoom. There we go. Uh, soda soda can, can, oh, is that a thing? Let's take uh, a look. Soda can lids. Wow, I'll be dang. All right, okay. Soda can lids is a thing. Oh wow! Hey, that hey, actually, I do have. I have four kids now, and mm -hmm. uh, they don't drink pop. But if they did, you know, this would be pretty sweet. There you go. <laughs> All right. Um, I guess maybe this is for like when you don't finish a soda, you can put it back in the fridge without it losing all the fizz. I don't know. It's still gross, but that's pretty smart. That's like. Slight, that's pretty good. I'd never heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> I never even knew this was a thing too. So I was like, oh, this is good. Usually people do the same stuff like uh, garlic press or garlic press, uh, collagen peptides, whatever. All right. So um, the very first thing, if you guys haven't noticed already, that happens when you have the Helium 10 Chrome extension uh, installed is you get a little bit just of some data right here on this page itself. You know, like you can see the top level uh, BSR in the top level category and whatever subcategories they're in, what their BSR is. You've got the ASIN, uh, you've got uh, who's got the buy box right now, like if it's FBA or if it's sold by merch, you know, FBM, or if it's actually uh, shipped and sold by Amazon, tells you how many sellers there are. You know, um, some of you guys will know right away if you see something with like, let's see, is there any here? Uh, most of the, are here's four sellers. You know, if you see something like 10 sellers, then obviously that, you know, that probably might be an arbitrage or, or wholesale item. So you get that visibility right here. There, there's this thing called calculate fees. I'll show you guys that in a second. Um, there's another way that you can get to there that is a little bit more clear. Let's just take a look here at the Chrome extension. Now, this is something that a lot of people are familiar. I'll be dang, 3,600 monthly searches for this. So there's there's over 3,000 people who, who need uh, soda can lids. We, we might have stumbled, uh, stumbled across a cool product right here. Um, I think a lot of you guys are familiar with Chrome extensions. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, ours is game changing or, you know, life changing. I mean, this is Chrome extensions on Amazon is probably one of the first things that was ever developed. Um, and we have one too. And a lot of the, the functionality is similar. You have title and you have how many, who has got the buy box, how many sellers, who, uh, what the FBA fee is. This is very exact. Uh, what the estimated monthly sales are. Uh, this is you, know, it, cool. you might not be the, the only one doing it, but accuracy really, really matters. I've seen a lot of them now are not accurate. So Helium 10 is definitely, definitely much more accurate uh, from what I've yeah. seen. Yeah, I just did a, a live video because one thing you won't, speaking about accuracy, and I think this is important for people to know um, because there's so much, you know, I don't like, you know, when tools fight with each other and stuff, um, unless somebody's doing something shady, then yeah, they should be called out. But um, what you'll see is different ones like posting, posting um, like studies, case studies. Oh, oh you know, he, here's this accuracy and here we did this, you know, amazing case study, right? Helium 10 has never done that. The reason is it's kind of useless. Obviously, Heli I'm not going to publish some study that shows that we're not that great or, or something like that, right? So, and nobody else is either. So like if they're, they're gonna show a study, of course they're gonna pick products that are showing you know, that they're, they're all, you know, always accurate, you know? So, um, right. what I did, you know, I was getting frustrated cause I saw like two or three come out. I'm like, guys, <laughs> this is meaningless, you know? So I actually yeah. did a Facebook live where I was going into five different people's accounts live, you know, like there's no editing or anything. And I, and I showed that, Hey, you know, sometimes helium 10 was the closest. Sometimes it wasn't more times than not. It was the closest. And, and, um, so yeah, just like Nate says, you can definitely uh, trust the numbers, uh, uh, on Helium 10 that it's going to be, you know, fairly accurate for the kind of categories and, and volume that people are searching for. Um, it's not just the last 30 days. I can actually go back all time to see the estimated BSR. So, for example, this product right here uh, seems to have some peaks during – oh, that, that, is, that, that obviously makes sense. This is a somewhat seasonal product. Like during the summer months, it seems to be – um, you know, selling well, but then maybe during the colder months, not as many people drinking soda. I don't know. Uh, here in California, we have the same weather all year round. So 
we don't know about these kind of things. But uh, definitely it looks like, you know, during the winter months, it's low. And then it's kind of picking up as the weather picks up, as you can see. This is all visible right here within the Helium 10 Chrome extension. Uh, you've got the BSR. I can see the BSR history, how many reviews, how many reviews they have in the last 30 days. What you might see like there, right there, negative five. Amazon sometimes takes away reviews uh, from, from sellers if they think they're shady. So you could just look at this on your own listing, your competitors and say, ha-ha, they're down five reviews from last month. So obviously, you know, Amazon is, has them under, um, is checking them out. We've got the dimensions, the weight, the, the size here. You know, I, th I think for wholesale sellers and, and arbitrage, this is kind of important. So you can kind of calculate uh, just by looking at it, your shipping. And for private label sellers, this is, this is really important. And I, th I think this part, I've never seen this in another Chrome extension. So this is the one thing that I think might be unique is the number of images in the listing. So if you're a private label seller, uh, you know that you need images in your, you know, at least six or seven images because buyers like to see different angles, infographics, lifestyle photos. So if I was on here and I see something like this, one image, I'm like, yo, this is probably going to be, you know, not that uh, optimized of a listing. Here it is, you know, only one image and exactly what I thought. Whenever you only have one image, obviously this, you know, whoever owns this has no idea how to make an Amazon listing and their listing is garbage to one bullet point. All right. So of course this is a as seen on TV, so it's not private label. Uh, most likely this is probably just all arbitrage. But then if, if that was a private label product and a whole bunch of images or a whole bunch of listings here on the first page had like one or two or three images, boom, that's a, a indicator to me that there might be opportunity in this niche because if I come in with seven images, I'm already better than most of the listings right here on first page. That just gives you some quick visibility on the listing quality uh, here on the first page. Let me go into, let's see. Let me go into one of these that has a lot of reviews, an older listing. Looks like this one has the most reviews. Premium soda can lids. Wow, this has so many reviews and they don't even have FBA Prime. I wonder if that, that's crazy. That's crazy to me that this is uh, one of the top sellers that doesn't have Prime. So I'm on the page itself. Um, let me show you some of our other tools. We've got profitability calculator. All right. So I'm here. Um, this pulls in all the information from the listing. Now this is something I, uh, as I explain the tools, I'm going to uh, say what works for, for other, you know, private label, wholesale arbitrage. We even have stuff that works for merch, you know, by Amazon. A lot of this stuff works for that as well. So this is something that works for anybody uh, would be interested in this. And this is a lot. This is basically the regular Amazon FBA calculator, but on steroids. We put, it pulls in all the dimensions, the weight, the outbound shipping weight, um, you know, the price, and then you put in, okay, how long is my inventory going to sit there? You know, like one month, two months, three months, four months, because that has to do with your storage charges. Uh, this one, it just puts in a 20% a, a number you've got to put in. So like, let's say you went to Alibaba and you're like, hey, I can, I can source this. Or if, if you have a wholesale account, you say, hey, my wholesale price on this is, you know, $3, all right? You've got to put your estimated freight costs, what it costs for you to get the product to Amazon. Most of you guys who are constantly in business, you know that, hey, uh, I pay $200 per cubic meter to ship from China to Amazon. I, I pay X per pound, whatever. However you do your uh, shipping, you should know your shipping costs, and then you would put that here. I'm just going to leave the default here of 200 uh, basically you get everything broken down your, your unit freight costs, you know, how much it's costing you per unit, what your storage fees are going to be. The cool thing is it actually breaks it down first three quarters with fourth quarter. You know, the storage fees is different, uh, depending on, on the time of year for Amazon. You've got the FBA fee, the referral fee. You can throw in another cost here. Like, let's say you have to pay, you know, somebody who's managing your account 5%. Well, you can throw that cost in here. And then basically at the bottom, what you get is your net profit and even your, your ROI uh, and, you know, what your uh, margin, your margin is. So one thing that I love about this, uh, let me see. I wonder if it's eight. There's like a certain, there's like a certain, um, yeah, here we go. All right. So let's say that your product uh, was, here we go. All right. Let's just say for whatever reason, this is what populated. Okay. This soda can box is nine by nine by nine. Even though it weighs only 0.1 pounds, uh, Helium 10 knows 
that you would be charged seven pounds shipping weight because it's small oversize at this size, right? And so maybe you're, you, you have this here and you're looking at this um, and you're looking at the FBA calculator, the one on Amazon, right? And then you, you see down here, oh my goodness, I'm going to lose 30 cents a unit um, on this. You know, obviously I am not going to sell this product, but watch this. With this, you can actually manipulate the sizes just in case like say, hey, what, what if I took one inch off of just one side of this package? You know, what would happen? Boom. I just changed one inch on this package. It took it down now to six ounces, the actual weight, because now it's large standard size. And my profit went from negative 30 cents to 688 a unit just by changing one inch of one side. And who can't do that? You know, so... I'm not saying obviously you can't you can't do that for every every everything, but um, this is just an easy way to see like, hey, you know, if if I source the same kind of product and I can shave some inches off of the box, is it going to make a difference? And as you can see here, that difference sometimes can be huge. Did you know that Helium Ten had this? Hey? Yeah, I did. Excellent. Have you used it? Have you uh, have any uh, good stories about it, or do you use it to uh, when you're trying to source at all? I am more of an arbitrage guy myself. I have but like for arbitrage, I, don't you um like do you repackage like do do you do you just stick uh um FBA labels on the actual retail packaging and send it or do you have to actually repackage anything with arbitrage for you? Yeah, you have to repackage it. Yeah. Well, I okay. mean, so you put it in the in an FBA uh, shipment and then you ship it to to Amazon and then they handle it all for you, um, unless you're doing merchant fulfilled. Um, but yeah, the, the profitability cal or profitability calculator is definitely. Definitely cool. There's there's a lot of other um, other tools that do it. And Tactical Arbitrage now has uh, a similar a similar extension that is uh, the one I use primarily now. Um, but yeah, I'm, not so, a, I mean, I'm not a full time seller now either. Uh, yeah. So there, there's a lot of great tools you know out there to use. But no matter what you guys are using, and, and I hope you guys don't think this is just a you know helium ten sales. I'm anything I I talk about today most likely can be applied to whatever tool you guys are using. It's really important. So, so this is something that I think is so small that some people don't think about. You know, they don't think about, oh, man, if I change just one inch on something, I can infinity increase my, 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 my profit. Right. So, guys, regardless of what tool you use, please, I hope you guys are taking notes on some of this stuff because these are things that a lot of sellers are not even, you know, doing. They're just like, oh, this uh, costs $10.00. Or this, you know, is retailing for 10, I can get it for two. Yeah, it looks like I can make money. And then, you know, that's it. No, go a little bit deeper, guys. It's going to mean a lot for your bottom line, especially when you're trying to scale. Right. Two things that you've said already that kind of, I think it, people should take note of is uh, you said the the listing that was losing reviews, that's awesome uh, as a sign for, uh, you know, p uh, potentially coming into a market because there's somebody that's at the top there that is not on Amazon's good side that's losing reviews because you don't just lose five reviews like that. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, exactly. And then the next thing you said was uh, listings. Uh, you can see how quickly that a crappy listing uh, made it there. It's kind of like the analogy I told somebody uh, on, on a coaching call for for something else. I was talking about how uh, you kind of you if if there is somebody that you liked dated someone that was like really ugly, and you thought you were really ugly, you would probably ask them out because you're like, oh, she's dated ugly people before. <laughs> so when you see Amazon puts an ugly listing up. Uh, you're like, oh, maybe maybe my ugly listing or just slightly better looking listing could beat it. Yep, Every, absolutely. Everyone does it in a different analogy. My analogy is, you know, a little bit. Get that confidence uh, confidence booster. Yeah. yeah uh, another tool we've Auto got in the Chrome extension, uh, Review Downloader. All right, so Review Downloader, um, this helps uh, private label sellers, especially like let's say you're in the product research stage and you just want to study all of the one-star reviews or all the five-star reviews. And the reason you would do that if you're in private label is that you want to see from your competition what everybody hates about that product and you got to make sure that when you produce yours, it doesn't have that. You also want to see what does everybody love and you got to make sure your product has that. But in this situation, I'm just looking at all of the reviews since like May of 2018 and it pulled up right here. There's only, ah, it's not enough maybe. There's only 243. It looks like this product is pretty old. It's only gotten 243 reviews in the last year. But the cool thing is, is right here on uh, analysis, all right? So on analysis, this shows, now this is something really, really cool. Um, one, of these, one of these times, uh, it's going to be something that Nate doesn't know about. Maybe it's this one. I don't know. But basically what this is, it shows you every two, three, four, five word phrase that is appearing in the reviews 
most and sorts it from most common to least so that you can understand regardless of if it's positive or negative, what is on the mind of your customers or not of your customers, of your competitors' customers who order this product that you're thinking of sourcing, all right? Because right here, you're always going to get gems. Like the first one here, soda cans. Well, duh. Soda cans, of course, it's going to come up. But look at number three right here, the fizz in. So I'm like, what the heck? What does the fizz in mean? So I don't have to guess. I'm just going to click this. Now, every single review that says the fizz, you know, that's talking about the fizz is coming up right here and it's highlighted. So I, I'm going to start just browsing this. It says, uh, the downside is they don't hold the fizz in the can. Uh, didn't keep the fizz that well. Uh, they aren't tight enough to keep the fizz in. In 15 seconds, I just have an insight um, about what is important to com customers of this niche. They are worried about keeping the fit, which is kind of like what I had said. When right. I, uh, you, could, you could create a product brand name called the fizz in or fizz in. And yeah. You already, and then, yeah, dude, that's, that's awesome. I actually just shared a link to an article I wrote um, a couple years ago. I forget who it was. Somebody, this was, I, I was, I was researching some marketing stuff and, and uh, I forget who said it, but they were like, you know what you need to do is you need to go to Amazon and see the one in five star reviews for products that are in your space. And you need to see what people are passionate about on both sides. What did they love? And then what did they hate? And then make your product uh, a solution uh, to the things that they hate and then a, uh, you know, add on to the things that they love or you make absolutely sure has all those things. So that's, that's awesome. That was really cool. Absolutely. Now this thing is huge. Um, it, again, it's another thing where it's like, it, helium 10 is so powerful that I feel like, uh, it's just getting people to use it. The sale I think is a very easy sell, but it's getting people to, to put in the time and effort and, um, and actually use it. Cause it's, that is, that's huge. I mean, if you're coming up with a private label product, that's, that's massive. Yep. And, and it's not just in the product research, you know, like Nate said, the, the, the third part that I would use this is if everybody's talking about the fizz, whether they love how it worked or hated, that's the kind of things that I'm going to put in my top two bullet points and in my imagery, because you need to make the emotional connection. Again, this is not helium 10 related. This is just Amazon in general. So many sellers don't think about that emotional connection, but if you guys think about it, there's two kinds of buyers on Amazon. I'm generalizing it a little bit. The first kind is the kind of customers that a lot of uh, you arbitrage folks are attracting. They're, they're looking for this exact blender bottle, you know, right? The, the, this brand and this red one, and they saw it wherever, and they just want to get it on Amazon. So they're just zeroed into this product, and until they find it, they're not going to buy anything, all right? They don't care about the reviews. If it has a one-star review, they just want this, all right? Um, the other kind of customers is like they just type in coffee mug. You know, they don't know brands of coffee mugs and they're just now browsing and see something that catches their eye and that makes that emotional connection. Like, hey, this seems to meet my needs, right? And so this is the, the secret sauce, as it were. You can do all your product research or keyword research for soda cans and you're going to come up with keywords like soda can lids, soda caps, soda this and plastic covers and whatever. But keep the fizz in is not a keyword that's going to come up in keyword research because that's not something people search for. That's something people think about. And this is so important. You've got to get in your buyer's minds and then put that stuff in the copy, not so that you can rank for that keyword or something. But you so know what's you funny? I think you and I literally mind. said that we could go back in the video. Remember we said, what the heck is a, what the heck is a, a soda can? Like? Yep. Yep. I swear to God, I think that we said keeps the fizz in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You did. I mean, that was the only thing I could think of. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't even, I've never even used something like this. But, you know, what happens in Amazon, whether we're private label or arbitrage or wholesale, we sell where, what the opportunity is, what we, we can. It's not selling stuff that we're passionate about or that we know. You know, we're not like regular entrepreneurs, like, hey, I'm so passionate about this, so this is what I'm going to focus on. Like, uh, I, I mean, if I get a, a killer wholesale deal on this, I, I might not know anything about blender bottles. And that doesn't mean I'm going to avoid this, all right? So because I don't know anything about blender bottles, this kind of research is so important because now I'm learning stuff that I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have learned otherwise. Right. So again, if you don't use Helium 10, you still need to do this method, just like hire a VA, have them open up all 800 reviews and read it. Now that's going to take hours and hours. Obviously you saw in Helium 10 it took me three seconds, but regardless, 
this is something that I think uh, sellers uh, should do, especially private label sellers. Yeah, Let's go. it makes a lot of sense of a ton of data, which is really, I mean, there's so many different product opportunities. And like you said, when you, when you expand beyond just, I'm interested in, um, you know, I'm interested in, and I don't know, uh, baseball, I'm going to only sell stuff for baseball training. I could do that. But then if I, if I'm, if my goal is to make money on Amazon, I need to go wide and that's going to be a wide, a wide ocean of data that I need to go through as quickly as possible. And helium 10 is that uh, funnel for all of that data, which is, Really, what uh, what separates it apart is how much uh, it really can do with the data. Like you said, twenty different tools, um, and, and I think we're still only on the extension. So <laughs> yeah, we're like we're like on three. But don't this stuff. I really I try to focus on the really cool stuff. I'm gonna right. bring oh, yeah, some sure. of the other stuff. But yeah, uh, I, yeah. I want pe I want people to be like, whoa, or wow, I didn't know that was possible. So we have a lot of it in the Chrome extension. That's why we're spending a little bit extra time here in the Chrome extension. Um, I'm in one of the products where I saw again, thanks to the Helium 10 extension, that there is 10 different sellers on here, right? So I hit this, our other tool, which is called inventory level, okay? Inventory level, again, this is something good for private label, wholesale, arbitrage, whatever. Um, this is gonna tell me how many units each seller has in stock left and who the sellers are, what the rating is, in case you're worried about it, uh, you know, what's the fulfillment, if it's FBM or FBA. And of course, I mean, there's other tools that I'm sure arbitrage and wholesale people are using for this. This one just is built into Helium 10. And for those who don't know how what this would be for, uh, why don't you tell me, like what, what would you as an arbitrage or, or wholesaler use an insight into the re remaining inventory of competitors? Well, there's a lot of things. I mean, if you if you can see what they have in stock, I mean, there's a tool that's out there that was wildly popular called How Many that's still out there that um, I used to use that pay, back in the day. Yeah, as a sweet, it, it's you know people pay nine bucks a month for that, and it was a no brainer for them because uh, when you know how many are in stock, you know how many you should you can uh, theoretically expect to sell, um, or if it's a time, it's a good chance for you to get in, or you know, uh, it's it's wildly important. It's like going to uh, I don't know. It's like if you're going to go to uh, to the bar, you want to know how many people are in line at the bar. And if it's going out the door uh, and your buddy calls you and says that it's out the door, you're not going to show up. Or, you know, you'll go and you'll know you have to wait. But it's just good to know that you can either jump in or, or stay out. Exactly. Like, like right here, if I knew I could only make profit if I sold this product for, you know, $11 even, I look here, I see two people have, you know, are cheaper. But then I say, oh, they only have 11 units left in stock. Yeah, I'll wait this out. All right, now if they had like a thousand units in stock, well, that's like different. I'll be like, next, you know, hard pass. I'm gonna go on to the, the next product. So really good, uh, uh, really good insight for, especially for uh, arbitrage. Uh, what other tool do we have here? Profitability calculated, inventory level, review downloader. One more here. Um, is there any holidays that either we just passed or are about to come up? Like uh, gift card holidays, like Mother's Day. Like, 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 oh, Mother's Day. Okay. <laughs> Mother's Day. Memorial Day is coming up. Uh, gifts for wife, let's just put. All right. So let's just say, um, now what happens is, let's say that this was this search. You know, th Mother's Day just passed. And so this is probably still pretty relevant as far as what are the best performers. But what about if this was October? And, you know, who knows when somebody's watching this video, it might be October. Do you think that if I search for Mother's Day gift for wife, that the same products are going to be showing up here? What do you think? Robert says no. What does Robert say? Robert says no. And you're correct. And Robert, why is Robert correct? Robert's correct because 90% of these are going to be out of stock or they're going to just close their listing, right? And so whatever is left is just probably, is, I mean, whatever is left, page one is probably going to be different every day because there's not going to be a whole bunch of, uh, you know, sales history, recent sales history for Amazon's algorithm to know what to put. So if you try to do your, key, your, your product research in October for Mother's Day gift, you'd be based and you're looking at page one, you would be trying to, you would be pulling things that, probably have not, is no correlation to what really the best selling items on Mother's Day are. So what I suggest doing whenever there's a holiday or anything seasonal, if next, if, if it's too late for you, like it's too late for Mother's Day, 
right? But I'm going to, since it's fresh, and this is probably a good representation of what the best sellers were, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run uh, ASIN Grabber. And this is going to pull the top 100 listings and top 100 ASINs in order. It's going to tell me the price because what is going to happen, like now come October, when I'm trying to plan for the next Mother Day, or actually that's too early, probably December around there, and I'm about to you know, make an order or maybe check with my wholesale contacts about you know, what products I want to start ordering for Mother's Day, I go back to this that I saved, and I can save this into Excel, and even if the products are out of stock, I can click on you know, the ASINs, and now I can see, oh, you know, the top 10 items, you know, the, there was a, a bath bombs, there was a, a comfy blanket, there was a pillow, um, whatever the heck, you know, some of these other things are. Now I have an accurate idea about what kind of products are performing well on Mother's Day for uh, this keyword. So if that's the keyword I want to focus on, I'm not trying to guess what, what people want. So this is just another way uh, that you can do that. The other way that people use this, let's say we are in the middle of Mother's Day and you have a Mother's Day, uh, whatever this was, gift for wife or something, and I want to target with a product targeting ad. You know, private label sellers uh, use product targeting ads where you can put your ad on a competitor's ASIN. Well, uh, if you just want a whole list of everybody, you know, like say, hey, I want to put my ad on the top 50. Well, you don't have to go and copying the ASIN, copying and pasting each ASIN one by one. Just run this on whatever page you want to get the ASINs from, download it, copy all the ASINs at once, paste it right into your uh, PPC campaign, and now your ad is going to hopefully show up on each of those pages. All right. Any questions so far about the Chrome extension from Nate or anybody uh, Robert, else out there? Robert has his hand up. Um, Robert does get the participation award for tonight, by the way. All right. What's Robert, up, Robert? Let's keep the flow. Um, Robert, I see you had your hand up. It's down now. If you have a question, you ask it in the chat, and uh, I'll answer it. I don't know. If maybe that was old and I missed it. And we are also live on YouTube now. Um, I decided that Facebook was not uh, going to let me stream, so that stinks. Uh, but we're on YouTube. Uh, cool. There. So if anybody's watching on YouTube, what's up? I'm here with Bradley Sutton. He's going through Helium 10. Uh, you can pretty much jump right in at any point. This is not really a linear training. Uh, we're just going through the different different features. And uh, if you get a chance, there will be a replay. You can start from the beginning. We've been going for about 25 minutes now. So um, we will have a replay of the whole thing uh, when we're done. Cool. All right, now finally we get, I mean, that was what, like five, six tools right there. We're going to get to yeah. the nitty-gritty, the Helium 10 itself, all right? Uh, first tool I want to talk about is Black Box. Again, just like Chrome extension, this is not something that uh, a lot of you guys are unfamiliar with. It's a product research tool. Let me just explain that our uh, tool, though, uh, last I checked, we have the most products in our database, over 450 million. So basically, you use this in order to find the opportunity. All right, so like I can say, hey, show me something in the, uh, I was about to say cell phone and accessories. Please never sell anything in those. You'll, you'll be very difficult. Uh, so, you know, show me something in home and kitchen that's making, you know, at least $1,000 a month. Maybe the price is within here, but maybe has less than 50 reviews. Uh, maybe the review rating is bad. Maybe it's going to have this shipping tier. Um, hey, maybe the listing has less than X number of images. Remember, just like we talked about how important that is. Uh, in, in the Chrome extension, I can actually search for that here. I can say, hey, show me only products that have two or three images, but that are selling $5,000 a month. What, what might that tell you? Well, shoot, if a product with only two or three images is making that much money, maybe the competition is not that great, you know, so I, I can swoop in. But there's a million different filters here that you guys can play around with. And this, again, this is great for uh, private label to find a brand new private label, but you could do like number of sellers 10 minimum. So like, you know, you're going to arbitrage or you can say you have, let's say you're a wholesale seller. You have the whole list of, of what is this snack factory, snack factory, pretzel, pretzel chips. Um, you can do title keyword search so that only the snack factory pretzel chips, uh, show up and you can see what all is there and then compare it to compare it to your list. Tons and tons of things. Uh, you want to find seasonal products? Like what was the best Valentine's Day? Um, what's something that people do on Valentine's Like heart chocolate, heart-shaped chocolate box, right? Well, I could say, you know, I would put like chocolate box and then I would say best sales period. Like I want to see a product, you know, because heart-shaped chocolates could be sold throughout the year. But if I'm curious, which is the one that really just kills it 
during Valentine's Day, well, I would say, hey, show me the products that are heart-shaped Valentine's that had the best sales month of February 2019. So tons of uh, ability right here for product research in yep. uh, Black Box. You have a comment yeah, about that? This is, this is uh, I think, another one of the tools that we'll have to ask him later, but I believe Black Box is one of the ones that uh, Jacob – the guy I was talking about is using for uh, KDP research as well. Yeah, we got the books category, which I didn't even realize. You know, we, we had that until today. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Uh, competitors, this is just something where I can pick, like, well, let me just pick a random one here. Like, let me just pick this bath bombs. Well, what we do, if you just want a, a decent idea of, like, maybe what are some of the products that could be similar that are ranking for a lot of similar keywords as opposed to there. Well, look here. Now, now this showed me 188 products. And as you can see, they're almost very similar here. So now I can see some of the top performing bath bombs, you know, that are similar to this product. If I didn't want to go and do the research just on Amazon itself. And it tells me a lot of the estimations here, again, estimated sales, estimated revenue, the number of reviews. Uh, I can actually see in here, I can do this, you know, I can go back, you know, 90 days and, and see what's going on, like how their, their reviews go up. You know, obviously you don't want the review rating to keep going down. Like here, you want it to go up, but here it started going up. So this is just kind of some visibility into the review history as well. You could use this on your own product as well. Uh, niche. This is just another way to search. It's kind of like similar to a search on Amazon. Uh, if I was going to search for bath bomb sets, um, this is going to show me products just within here. Now, you know, some of the top selling ones uh, here, instead of me looking on Amazon, I don't use this personally myself, but it's another tool that we have. So I want to show it. Here's something that's cool. Uh, talking about product targeting ads, like let's say, let's go to this one right here since we've been on this bath bomb one. Um, let's copy the ASIN. All right, and let's take a look at this. I'm gonna show you, hopefully we have information in this category. This is, I'm assuming the beauty category, so we should have, yeah, 257. All right, so what is this? Let's look here. Um, I'm going to look at frequently bought together. All right, so for those who don't know, frequently bought together, um, these are the items that we have detected that show up right here. So frequently bought together, the difference is, I think there is a product right there. Uh, the difference is with frequently bought together, it's bought in the same like shopping uh, cart time, you know, sh the same checkout, right? Two products. So what I would do here is a lot of people who do product targeting ads, you know, they want to put their product on other products ads. They only focus on their direct competitors. But my suggestion is, and again, this is just general Amazon knowledge, not Helium 10 related, that, hey guys, look at what people are buying together. Because maybe somebody goes to Amazon and is only wants to buy a bath bomb, but they're one of those impulse shoppers who, who pick up the, the juicy fruit from the shopping line in the, in the checkout. They, they wanna buy gum just because they see it. Well, here you have amazing insights it, for your competitor, your competitor is a bath bomb and you have a brand new product you're just launching. If your product is a similar to it, guess what? These products that have a history of being bought together with the bath bombs, if your customer avatar is the same as this competitor, which it should be if your product is similar, well, guess what? There's a chance that somebody who's buying your bath bomb could be interested in this caddy tray and vice versa. So then if somebody was on Amazon searching for a bathtub caddy tray, which now that I think about it makes total sense. At first I was like, what the heck? Why are people buying this tray? But I didn't realize it's a bathtub tray. Oh, they're, they, yeah, they're making a whole evening of it. Right, yeah. The and then they going, like, they got, you got the iPad in the tub, are you kidding me? Oh, you know you. you, you a, 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 gla a, a wine glass looks like a candle here, my oh, goodness. Yeah. But hey. If they're ordering that and they go on that page and all of a sudden at the bottom, they see an ad for bath bombs. They're like, oh, shoot. You know, I was buying this for my wife or she would really love this bath bomb, you know, set too. And now just they probably never would have even searched for your product. But because they saw it on an ad right on that page, you get the sale. So this is just That's great smart. insight. Uh, there's, especially there's, two other, there's two other things that immediately hit me as, a, as an entrepreneur. Um, number one is the opportunity for bundling, you know, creating yep. custom bundles. But number two would be if you sold on your own channel, 
um, and you sold your one product, like let's say you had the bath bomb and you sold the one bath bomb, you could make a, a yep. sales funnel where you could actually sell it as an upsell um, where exactly. you, could say, you got the bath bombs. I want you to really treat yourself and get the, <laughs> get the uh, bathtub caddy tray. Hey, hey guys, bundling, that's, that's 2019. You know, I think more and more people are using that because uh, it, it's a great way to differentiate yourself and it's a great way to add value and, and, and you know, get, get some money to the bottom line. And you don't have to guess what you should bundle. You've got the visibility. And, and the cool thing is here, as you can see, right now there's only like three, uh, there's only two other things here. But we are checking this throughout the month. So we are showing you like there, there's the one that's there right now. But we're showing you the stuff that we've detected at other times of the month. Like it looks like different bathtub trays are, are being bought are frequently bought together um the other thing we have is the customer also bought uh that's another you know uh widget down there now the difference between customer also bought and frequently bought together is that means maybe on monday somebody buys this bath bomb maybe like friday or something they buy something else so th that list is actually going to be bigger and it's just a you know right. a wider view of what we're talking about um, let's see. All right. Trends that I'm not going to go into. I'm just going to browse over it. Just, it, it just gives you some, uh, Google analytics, some Google trends, and then comparing it to like BSR history of a product. So I personally don't use that. You guys can definitely, uh, you know, play around with that once you get it. Magnet is something, uh, oh, by the way, black box. Well, I just showed you that works in, uh, Canada, USA, France, Italy, Spain, Germany, and whatever. Was it like big, big nine of them, right? Yeah. Uh, so, so whatever is the, the top, you know, the, the two in North America main ones and then the five in, in Europe. Uh, Magnet is the same way. Actually, Magnet uh, also works for India. So it works for everything uh, and plus, plus India. Spain, that was the one I was missing. So anyways, uh, you know, and Magnet here, uh, oh, we lasted a while before my, my Chrome started crapping out here, but let's go. Uh, in Magnet, if we type in bath bombs, it's basically, this is keyword research, all right? Um, it's going to show me, you know, maybe 2,000, 3, 4, 5,000 keywords that could be related that's coming from different sources. It's not a list of like, hey, these words you have to put in your listing. Ah, I can't stand my Chrome. I might have to clear my, my cache here a little bit. Oh, it still came up there. 10,000 keywords, all right? So what, where are these words coming from? It's coming from Smart Complete. Smart Complete means that we have in our database 7,500 words that bath uh, bombs is, is a part of, you know, whether it's at the first part, uh, first part of the word, you know, basically it's a, it's a better version of autocomplete. Like if I put in bath bombs, you know, this is, this is Amazon autocomplete. Like it gives you eight, right. And it's only bath bombs together, but we give you 7,500 keywords, phrases that have bath and bombs somewhere in, in, in the phrase. Organic keywords, this is telling you all of the keywords that a lot of the top sellers of bath bombs are ranking for organically. Uh, Amazon recommended is Amazon actually scores every keyword as it relates to an ASIN. And we are showing you the ones that Amazon is recommending that you advertise for. That doesn't mean that it's a great recommendation, uh, but it's um, – a lot of people want insight into Amazon's algorithm and what Amazon thinks is relevant to your product. So we're, we're showing you guys that there. And this is important to do in, in, in each marketplace. And this is a big mistake. Again, wholesale, arbitrage, private label. A big mistake that sellers make when they want to sell across the markets is they're successful here in the USA. They're like, hey, Canada is an English-speaking country. I'm just going to go ahead and copy my English, my, my American listening to Canada. But guess what? And UK too, but guess what? People in Canada, people in UK, even though they speak English, they search for different terms. Like the most popular search terms aren't always going to be the same as America. Like, do you know how to, uh, we call it the hood of a car. Do you know how they, uh, they call that in UK? Personally, I do not. Bonnet. And the trunk of a car. You know, we know that's the back door of the car, the trunk. In the UK, it's um, the boot, I believe. All right, those, different those words, ridiculous. Those different countries. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't understand, you know, a lot of it, like there, there's something called like a nap, uh, some weird keyword, and yeah. that's actually a diaper. Like the, the, whatever word for diaper is in the UK is like something that would make an American person laugh hysterically. I forgot what it is. But the, the point is that you guys need to do your research in different marketplaces. Whatever tool you're using, 
don't base everything off of USA and then copy it to the English speaking and then just do a direct translation to the Spanish and Italian and French. You actually need to do keyword research in each of those marketplaces to see what kind of words they're using. Hope that makes sense to people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cerebro. This one here is uh, my most, uh, is my favorite tool. And I'm just gonna show you the, the easy version of it right now. We have an advanced uh, functionality that would just blows my mind and I'll just explain it. So this product here, uh, oh my God. It's, I would say they're making anywhere between like, let's say it looks like 500,000 and $700,000. You know, we estimate about 663. But regardless of what the sales are, these guys are making bank, right? So Robert or anybody else, Oh, uh, Robert says cigarette is fag in England. Yes, I forgot. I forgot about. I forgot about that one. You might get banned in the Amazon USA for using that that keyword. But yeah, don't use that in the USA. Yeah, right? <laughs> suspension, you know, suspension. You are using derogatory terms. Uh, but yeah, and that's an excellent example, though. You know, um, but if you had a cigarette product and you didn't use that word in UK, you're pretty much screwed, right? Um, so Robert, Nate, whoever's you know else is on here. If I tell you that this product is making more than half a million dollars a month and you want yourself to, uh, you know, uh, sell this kind of bath bomb, what would some logical, what would you want to know? What would be the logical thing that you'd be curious about? If this guy is making $500,000, what's the question that you're going to ask? And Nate can answer if nobody else, if, if the, the lag is too much here. <laughs> Robert says, how many competitors? That's a good question. Any other ideas from anybody else on YouTube or I can't see the YouTube comments, but what do you think, Nate? What would you like to know about this product? Um, well, I mean, first thing I would look at uh, as far as it would be like the cost of it to ship and, and create, would it be something I could reasonably source? Um, sure. The average selling price. Yep. Um, Absolutely. If I know the revenue, I'm not really super concerned with the reviews, I guess. Um, I mean, yeah, don't, don't look at this page. I'm just saying for, even if I didn't show you this page, if I just told you, Hey, Nate, look at this product. Uh, I think bath bombs is the opportunity. Um, this product here is making 600 grand a month for me. You tell me, you tell me if you're, you think differently, but for me, I'm like, how the heck are they making 600 grand a month? Where are those sales coming from? And as we all know, sales, in Amazon, bottom line, it comes from searches, all right? Even PPC is still coming from searches. Of course, there's outside traffic, there's Facebook, you know, there's social media, there's, if you're a known brand, uh, I doubt life around two angels is some big time, you know, store brand. <laughs> I could be wrong, but it just doesn't seem like, you know, GM or anything like that. So <laughs> to me, I'm thinking that most... <laughs> I, I, I can't laugh at these guys too hard. They're making 500 grand a month, but uh, yeah, I don't know what... I don't know who their brand. Uh, I don't know who their brand uh, manager is, but they might have struck out there in that brand name. But anyways, I'd be like, "What the heck keywords are driving these sales?" And Amazon doesn't tell you, but there's a way to know using Helium 10. So I'm going to copy the ASIN. I'm going to paste it right here in Cerebro, and this is probably going to give me an O snap because Helium 10 is so powerful it overpowers my Chrome browser. All right, made it. All right, so right now, I, I can show you guys the top 10 or 15 keywords that are driving the sales of this product, all right? So the very first thing that I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna say match type organic. By the way, this is showing me every keyword that we have detected them showing sponsored ads for, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's huge. Uh, but I, I just want organic. Like, where are they ranking the top 306? So basically, organic means what keywords does this product display in the search results in the top 306 positions? Now, here's a question. I don't want to involve Robert here because of the delays. We're, we're running out of time. Hope we can go over time if that's all right. But let oh, me yeah, just totally. take, okay, cool. Let me just take the, uh, here's, here's, here's a question for you, uh, Nate. All right. Bath gifts, bath gift baskets for women. Search for like 500 times a month. Cool. I mean, seems fairly relevant, but they are ranked uh, position 300. That's like, uh, I don't know, page eight, nine, 10, around there. So is this one of the top generating sales generating keywords for this product, would you think? You would not think so, no. Absolutely not. Because outside of my mother, nobody has the patience to sit through eight pages of Amazon results and find the product 
that they want. I personally never even go past page one. All right. How about you? No, I don't either. Yeah. All right. So makes sense. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do, and this is just, I just can't stress how game changing this was for me because this kind of technology did not exist like more than two years ago, like four years ago. I couldn't just click a button and see all the keywords that my competitor was ranking for. All right. Yeah, but now we take it. Next level, right. Let's go. I'm going to say, Hey, show me everything where this product is on like not only on page one, but like the top half of page one from one to 15. All right. This is takes it down from 4,000 keywords. Holy crap. No wonder why this, <laughs> no wonder why they're making 500 grand a month. They are on page one for 1,145 keywords. However, all right, look at this. Let's look at this. Bath bombs gift set for women. That seems ultra relevant, okay? And they are page one, position one, all right? So that means as anybody who searches this, that's the first product that comes up. However, the search volume, the estimated search volume, per month for this keyword is only about 80. That means only like two, three people a day are searching for it. So here's my next question. Is this one of the, this is highly relevant. Is this one of the top generating, money generating keywords you think for this product? What would you say? We're trying to find the top 10, 15 keywords that are bringing the most of that $500,000 worth of sales. Do you think this is one of them? Uh, it's Let's got see, 82 up. total. Let me scroll down a little bit per month. Yeah. Right here. This one. Month, yeah. Robert says no. All right. Robert, why did you say no? There. Robert, you're correct. Robert, why did you say no? Robert needs a helium 10 t-shirt because of all his, uh, his, um, participation yeah, no, today. Too low search one. Exactly. I mean, 80 searches a month is not going to bring you anywhere close to even a thousand dollars, let alone thousand tens of thousands of dollars we're trying to find the top 15 so again I, there's another filter for that i'm going to go and i'm going to say helium 10 show me the words let's just say that our search for at least let's go let's go big let's go 1500 times a month all right now let's see what kind of list we have 66 holy crap no wonder why these guys are killing it now take a look at this now here's my question uh gifts for her Bath bombs for gifts. These are searched for tens of thousands of times. And look at their organic position, page one, position one. Do you think these keywords are driving sales, a big portion of their sales? 100% yes, all right? I just cannot stress how important this is for private label sellers who don't know what keywords to focus on, all right? If you have a competitor that's just crushing it, and it's the number one competitor or multiple competitors use this. And within two minutes, I mean, this took me like eight minutes just because I'm going through the process within less than two minutes, I could see the top keywords that's generating themselves. And if they're a product that's really similar to me, uh, you know, price wise, touch, feel function, guess what? If those keywords are generating sales for them, those are the keywords that I want to focus on to bring me sales. Now, maybe I'm not going to be able to scale the $500,000, you know, I'm not going to have 66 keywords that I'm on page one for right off the bat, uh, but it's going to help me prioritize which keywords I want to focus on to bring me sales. Um, so even as a, you know, I know, you know, you don't deal too much with having to change listings or do keyword research, but if you are a private label seller, can you see the value in this? What do you think, Robert? What do you think, Nate? He says he's redoing his listing tonight, so I think he I think he sees the value. Yeah, definitely. There he goes. He said absolutely. All right, guys. So um, this was the 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 basic version. I'm I'm just gonna explain really quick what the advanced version is. Uh, one mistake that sellers do make is they only study the top seller in the niche. Like let's say this is the top seller, and and they say, okay, these are my keywords. Hey, this guy's making six hundred thousand dollars a year. This is great. But the danger in that is. Um, let, let's say that this product was on the Joe Rogan podcast. You know, he talks about bath bombs is a sponsor. And then he gives like something to search for like a hashtag, like Joe Rogan says, Hey, Joe's bath bombs. 
And that's how everybody searches for it. Well, then, yeah, in Helium 10, it's going to show Joe's bath bombs. It's getting tons of searches in their page one, position one. So you're like, oh, shoot, I've got a bath bomb. Uh, this is an important keyword for this product. I better get to page one for this. And you put in a whole bunch of money in PPC or giveaways or whatever, trying to get to page one for Joe's bath bombs. And then you get to like page one and you get zero sales. Well, the reason is you didn't know that Joe's bath bombs is only relevant to that or this one product because of that promotion. All right. So people, when they search for it, they're only searching for that. So what you do to avoid that is you put, you can put up to 10 ASINs here. So what I like to do is I like to put five or six ASINs that are all really similar and all selling well. And then there's a filter down here where I can say, show me only the keywords that like all of these ASINs are on page one for. Then that just takes away any doubt that these are relevant to your niche. If five of the top sellers are all ranking for it, you know you're not going to come up with one that's only you know relevant to one. So that's again, Helium Ten exclusive. Cool. Yeah, that, that's awesome. I can I think about how many people got that bad day. They're like they thought something was just amazing, amazing opportunity that everybody else was dumb and missed, and it was really because of a crazy influx of sudden, you know, popularity. Like a show, exactly. like you said, that, that's, exactly. that's really cool. That's, that's pretty clever. Um, Frankenstein is our keyword processor. There's, it's not really Amazon related. Uh, it, it counts characters and words and, and, and allows you to move things around, remove duplicates, add, add commas. I've heard of college students using this to count how many words is in their essay. I mean, it has tons of, tons of uses, all right? So, like, for example, right here, there's total words 206, right? Uh, by the way, I just copied all of these, these 66 phrases. So there's 66 phrases. I copied it, put it to Frankenstein says there's 11 or 1000 characters, 206 words. But look at this. There's like gifts, gift, gifts, bombs, bombs, tons of duplicates. So I say, Hey, remove the duplicates. How many unique words are here? Boom. Within one click. Oh, there's 53 unique words. So in order to, 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 uh, index for 66 of these phrases, all right, and actually 206 words, all I really need is 53 unique words right here, okay? I can say, hey, uh, put these, you know, one word or phrase per line. Uh, I can include word frequency account. Wow, in these 66 keyword phrases, GIFs comes up 27 times. That might be important for you to know, like that GIFs is obviously a really important, you know, uh, keyword for this niche, right? Um, tons of things you can do here. Nothing to do with Amazon. It's all about trying to process all of your research that you're doing so that you can get it in an output that you would want. Because the next step is, uh, um, the next step is, the next step is what? Scribbles, listing optimization, all right? So this is only 66 keywords, but let's just say that, uh, I'm just gonna pick like these. Let's just say that these are my top 10 keywords that I really want to have in phrase form in my listing. I got to get it in my listing. Now it's time for me to make my listing. I paste those phrases here and now I'm just going to, uh, let me, let me go here and I'm going to find some different keywords. Let me go rank 10 to 35 and let's do 500. I'm just going to get some random list of keywords and we're going to pretend that we just did hours and hours of keyword research. And these are the other, there's only 89 here. That's not enough. Let me go 100. I want to get like 200 keywords or something. 374. Perfect. All right. I'm going to copy all of these keywords. The first thing I do is I put it to Frankenstein. And this gives me every single unique keyword. All right. So right here, I have 276 keywords. Now, the reason why I put these phrases, now I know I'm going really fast for you guys. You guys can ask questions, but this is so important. If you put something in phrase form in your listing, it's sending those relevancy signals to Amazon. Like, Hey, this is important. All right. Uh, if birthday gifts for her, if I have birthday in the title, gifts in the bullet points, four in the, in the uh, description, and like her in the back end keywords, there's a chance I could index for it. But is Amazon going to think I'm really relevant or going to help me out ranking wise? Probably not because they're like, they're just having to cut and paste words. But if I actually have this in my title, birthday gifts for her exactly in phrase form, it's telling Amazon that, hey, this is an important keyword for my listing. You obviously can't put tons of phrases in your listing. You just don't have the space. So I usually pick like 10 to 20 of my most important phrases. And that's why I have these in phrase form. But the rest, all I know is, or I, I know that all I have to do is just get these words once in my listing and I have a good chance of indexing. So right here, there's 
out of these 1,234 words, there's only 276 unique words. And I put them one per line. Actually, I see some singular letters right here, so I'm going to remove that. I'll remove single le words, re or not single words, remove single letters, uh, remove common words. Okay, now we got down to 245. So now I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to put it to scribbles. Okay, so now here I have a list of phrases. I've got a list of individual keywords. Watch what happens here. I'm going to hit apply. So now here are all the phrases I want to put in my listing. Here are all the individual words. So as I start writing my listing, let's just say um, birth day gifts for women. Okay. Do you see what's happening down here? Now it says, Hey, I use, this is cool. This is four words. And I was able to get two phrases in phrase form of my top two, just in four words. I got birthday gifts for women. I've got gifts for women. And it says here, I've used birthday. I've used gifts. So like maybe I start typing in birthday gifts gifts for her wife, birthday. You know, I'm just putting gibberish right here. Uh, might go ahead and throw in an emoji, whatever. All right. Now it says, whoa, I used birthday three times. Where did I use it? Click here. It shows me. So this is the way I made most of my listings when I was a consultant. I did all my keyword research and guess what? That keyword research is useless if you don't have it in your listing. So this helps right. you make sure you get every word that you spent all that time researching in your listing. So that you can be indexed. And so um, cool. yeah, really, really cool. What is index? Yeah, you guys need to make that for, for bloggers, by the way. I can, you, you can need to do what? Problem. You need to make it for blog posts too. There's like so <laughs> That's many. That's a good point. That's that a good point. Sweet. You should. For SEO, right? Yeah, it would be, yeah, it would be sick. That'd be pretty um, cool. Uh, Robert says, what is subject matter? Subject matter is uh, only available in the USA and only in certain categories. It's right there on the same tab as your search terms or your backend keywords. And it's five lines of subject matter that you're able to put 50 characters each. And that is super, super important for the Amazon algorithm. Things that you have in subject matter get indexed right away and send those uh, relevancy signals to Amazon. So let's, um, here, let's take a look. Uh, Nate, do you know, I mean, this is a word that we kind of, Amazon sellers, who knows when, kind of made up. Actually, Manny Coates was one of the first ones to use this. But do you know what we mean when we say, in, I've been saying that, there's a lot of people who might not even know what I'm talking about. What does being indexed mean for a keyword on Amazon? Basically that you're on the record for having it and you'll show up in exactly. the, uh, search results. Exactly. You're searchable for, all right? If you're not indexed, it doesn't matter how many searches it gets, you'll never ever come up. So for this one, all right, um, what, uh, Nate, what is a keyword here that you're, uh, a keyword phrase, not just a keyword, but a keyword phrase here that you're a thousand percent sure they're indexed for? Uh, bath bombs gift set. Bath bombs gift set, all right? Bath bombs gift set. Now give me some, a phrase that there's no way that they're indexed for it. Something completely out of left field. Uh, odor free. No, wait, that actually might, no, it, no, that, that, that could very well be in there. Uh, like, how about um, like Batman is stupid, or, or so, I mean, just some random yeah. phrase. Yeah, Batman is stupid. Batman is stupid. All right. So what Helium Ten does is it's going to go out there and check if you're indexed. So here, uh, by the way, I didn't do, I didn't enter anything in here, so I. This means I didn't do the storefront check, but this is all I care about. Is it index check mark? Yes. Bath bombs gift set is indexed for this, but Batman is stupid is not indexed for this. So what happens is you might have the best listing, but if for whatever reason, Amazon thinks you're not relevant, uh, maybe you unknowingly have used a forbidden keyword. Um, maybe you surpass your limits, whatever. Sometimes Amazon does not index you for everything that you want it to. So this allows you to go check to make sure that you are indexed for the keywords that you want to be. Uh, keyword cool. track. Go ahead. How often is that like updated? Is that if you, if that's a manual process. It? Okay. So, I mean, but it's instant. I, well, mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, if, if somebody had posted, if it's, what's the lag between it being indexed on Amazon and it being live on? Oh, I mean, it's, it's instant. So okay. basically cool. it's checking in real time. So, so like, like, uh, like I had said, like, uh, like with, who's, with keyword research tools for, for Google and SEO, they're always like, you know, there's always like a wide, wide lag time between yeah. when they actually show Once up. you click process, I mean, 
the lag is on Amazon's side. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, but here's the secret. Uh, Robert was asking about subject matter. That is the one field that if you enter something into there that is indexable, it will be indexed in five minutes on Amazon. You know, sometimes you put something in your title, you got to wait like 12 hours and it's still not indexed. But for whatever reason, something put in, in, in subject matter that wasn't indexed will be indexed in five minutes and you can search that uh, in, in uh, index checker. Nice. Um, this is, what is this? This is a keyword tracker. We, we talked about how important it is to be on page one, you know, for, for your keywords that are important. Um, this one allows you to go and just track, you know, how you're doing on your page one. And more importantly, something that's unique to Helium 10 again, is it showing you how your rank compared to your competitors. So like I, on this syrup, I entered in some top selling grade B maple syrup. And this is the main product, the blue one. And so as you can see, this product, if it was mine, I'm like, dang it, I am last place compared to, I mean, yeah, I'm on page one, great. But these other products who are my direct competitors, they are constantly ahead of me. So for me, I'm like, you know what? I need to put some money into this or something to get a little bit higher, all right? Um, that show, I can actually see also their sponsored position. All right, so uh, sponsored position shows, and this, you know, look at this. Uh, obviously, this guy's not even doing sponsored ads for like weeks at a time, and only one other ASIN of my competitors is even showing sponsored ads, and they're kind of below, all right? So this just gives you just really interesting insight into what your competitors are doing and how your performance is. Uh, keyword tracker, guys, is so important. As we said, keyword searches is what drives sales. And being on page one is so important and you're not going to be on page one at the beginning. So you put all your important keywords there and just do whatever campaign you want to do to get to page one and you're going to track your progress there and then you want to make sure that you stay there. So it's always important to, to watch your keyword tracking. Galaxy uh, S9 says, uh, are all the Helium products usable on uh, the Canadian marketplace.ca? Yes. Yeah. Yep. That was the second marketplace we did. And then just last year, we launched all five in Europe. Nice. Um, this one here is alerts. This is something that is super important for any kind of Amazon seller. Other than, no, even a, even a bookseller. This is important to a bookseller. Guy, uh, I'm sure maybe this has happened. Oh, this has happened to you, Nate. Um, has Amazon or any other sellers, especially if you're, if you're sharing buy box, gone and like changed the images or changed the title? or, or oh, yeah. done things, right? I mean, it probably happens more even in arbitrage and wholesale. So what happens you know, in the past, your sales take a nosedive and you have no idea what's going on. You actually look at the list and you're like, God dang it, somebody changed the image, just this crap image, or somebody changed the title to something else. No wonder why my sales are down. Well, if that ever happens uh, and you, we're tracking it, Helium 10 is going to show you, uh, is going to send you a text message or an email, whatever you choose, so that you know right away and then before your sales die, you hop on Amazon and try and fix that problem. Uh, if you get negative reviews or positive reviews, we're going to give you a, a little message. Um, a big thing, regardless of what kind of Amazon sellers, people have lost thousands and thousands of dollars because Amazon in the back end will measure something differently. Like somebody in a random DC will measure something three inches off and they're like, oh, this is a mistake. So I'm going to raise it three inches. Do you guys remember what we did in that profitability calculator? Just by changing something one inch, it affected the per unit bottom line by six bucks. Imagine if right. that happened to you on the opposite. Instead of going down, it went up. You would never know. And then you think, oh, I'm selling 100 units a day. And then you look at your, 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 your financial statement and you're like, well, why, why, am I, why am I losing money? Well, if Amazon changed your dimensions and now you're paying more for shipping, you won't even know. So if that happens you'll get an email from Helium 10. And guys, I cannot stress how much money this could uh, save you. Um, has that ever happened to you? I don't know how much that happens in arbitrage or wholesale. Well, it's not as big of a deal in arbitrage. I mean, the people hijacking is annoying and, and not cool, but it, it's not uh, as common to have a huge amount of one product um, end up getting, you know, losing a ton of money unless you have a deep line on something or you, you know, you might have a, um, a supplier that has a connection and you're, you're selling a lot of them. And yeah, that would be, that would be super annoying, but definitely, yeah. absolutely a hundred percent of you, if your own product you brought to market, that would be, uh, that would really, really suck. 
Yep. And what you just said, I forgot to even mention that, that yes, uh, the, the origin of this tool actually was called hijacker alert back in the day. So it will alert you if somebody jumps on your listing, somebody steals the buy box. Again, uh, you'll get uh, alerted for that. Um, we're almost done here. Inventory protector. I don't think that's very applicable. This just allows you to set your max order quantity from within here instead of having to go into your seller central. Refund genie is super important. This is how uh, some people... Um, this is how some people can pay for their Helium 10 membership. You know, I've seen people who have, you know, run Refund Genie on their account and they've gotten three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 back from Amazon because we give you the reports that you can submit for all the things that Amazon has lost or damaged or things like that. Um, I'm running this report right now because it looks like this account never had it, but, you know, maybe they'll say 500 bucks, whatever the case is. We show you how to submit those reports and then you can get your uh, money, money back. Uh, misspell error. We're going to phase that out because Amazon's algorithm is so, is so good right now. It's not even, uh, it's not even an issue. Uh, the last two tools we've got, a, um, follow up helium 10 follow up is a tool where it automates emails. So like if you're an arbitrage or wholesale sellers, that does a lot of fulfilled by merchant, you really care about your seller feedback. So this will, you, you can set up a sequence like, Hey, any customers who order this product, you know, five days after delivering, Please, you know, uh, send an email that says, I hope you enjoy your product. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback. Click here to give me seller feedback. If you're a private label seller, you might be trying to, you want them to, you know, leave you a product review um, or just something about your brand building. You can uh, automate that entire process right here and follow up. This is a tool that by itself, you know, in other places costs like 40, 50, 100 bucks just to have email automation. Uh, and then the last tool that we have here is Profits. Uh, profits is just complete financial analytics for your entire account. Obviously, this has to do with whatever Amazon account you have. It calculates your profit, your inventory levels, your ROI, uh, your expenses you can put on here, your inventory storage charge overcharges from FBA, what your best sellers are, all that stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and stop share right now. That is pretty much the entire suite. I tried to breeze through it. So if Robert has any questions or anybody else, um, Sean says he doesn't always see his emails. Do you have an option for the text alerts? Why is Sean replying here? Sean, what do you, <laughs> Sean, why are you replying? Uh, why, why, why are you on here? Sean is, uh, one, uh, our, one of our affiliate managers here. He's just playing some games, but yeah, actually, uh, if, if other people have that question, um, yes, as I said, uh, we send I'm it sure, out. I'm sure he was asking for text. someone else. <laughs> yeah. He's probably asking for somebody else. Maybe I hope you're copying that Sean, but, um, <laughs> yes, we send out in, uh, you better know the answers to that yourself, Sean, or else you're fired. No, I'm just playing. Uh, but, um, yeah, text messages or emails, whatever works, whatever's clever, whatever works for you. And Sean awesome. says the alerts, what are the images on the right for? <laughs> Those are screenshots. We actually take screenshots every day of your listing so that if something did change, you don't remember what it was or how it was, you can go back in history and, and you can see what's going on with your, um, with your images every day. Awesome guys. That is, I mean, it, it, it's, that's, that's pretty good to get it all in in an hour and 15 minutes. I mean, I think that could have gone into, I mean, we even had to skip a couple, uh, yeah. that weren't as relevant to uh, arbitrage. That's, that's so awesome. guys, if you, like I said, if you guys have, have seen the Helium 10, you know, have seen uh, banners or, or videos, uh, people that use it, uh, it, gets, it gets promoted a lot because it is very, very good. It's very, very popular among most of the larger sellers uh, that I know they're in private label are very uh, big fans of Helium 10. If you're interested in trying uh, Helium 10, you can get 10% off for life. Uh, the code is NM10, or you can get 50% off your first month with code NM50. I will put that down in the comments. Um, and I'll also, uh, there'll be on the YouTube video uh, replay and I'll email that to anybody. Uh, but Bradley, thank you so much for coming on, man. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for uh, having me. Yeah, it was great stuff. Guys, thank you all for, uh, for being here. I know we had a slimmer turnout than we uh, had hoped for, but uh, hopefully a lot of people check the replay out. And It'll uh, be in, uh, the replay will be in the Facebook group too. Yep, I'll share the replay out to my email list and to the Facebook group. Uh, I'll try and make sure that, you know, send me the link just in case I'm not in your Facebook group. And then uh -huh. if anybody who's watching this replay and, and needs some clarifications or wants to ask me, just tag me and awesome. I, I try and get to everything. Awesome, sweet. All right, Bradley, you were awesome, man. I appreciate you. Guys, All right, thanks. have a good one. See you guys again next week.